It's a privilege to be here on these grounds and these hallowed grounds. And almost 173 years ago, almost 200 Texans gave their lives in the defense of an ideal. You know, records indicate that a great number of those who fought and died here did so with the expectation that there was a reward at the end of that period of time, and that reward was a piece of land to call their own. And, and in a letter back home, there was a Tennessean, one fighter whose name was uh, Makaja Autry. And he wrote before the, uh, before the attack, he said, be of good cheer, Martha. I I'm, I'm going to provide you a, a sweet home. He said, I shall be entitled to 640 acres of, of land for my services in the Army and 444 more acres upon condition of settling my family down here. So you see, land ownership has been essential to the Texas culture for a long time, part of an abiding human desire that would even motivate a young man to risk his life to provide a home for his family. And that commitment to land ownership is still pretty strong in the state of Texas. In fact, more than 90 percent of the land in this state privately owned. And we owe it to our citizens to protect their rights as landowners, members of the community. As in every state, a drama has played out in Texas over the years as the needs of a growing population have run up against individual property rights. If it weren't for the proper exercise of eminent domain, there would likely be no highways, no water treatment plants or other projects that are necessary for the public good. However, abuses of eminent domain have occurred across the U.S. with government entities overstepping their bounds, abuses that unfortunately gained the protection of law with the U.S. Supreme Court's Kelo decision. When that decision was handed down in 2005, the legislature responded to my request by passing Senate Bill 7, which made it clear that Texans will not tolerate taking land for economic development or giving it to a private developer. Here in 2009, I believe our legislators have continued moving us in the right direction with the passage of HJR 14. Its key provisions include language to close off one angle a government entity might pursue to improperly take land by requiring the government to continue having ownership, use, and enjoyment of the property. So they just turned and handed to private property or to a private party. It also makes it clear that pr public use does not include economic development for the purposes of enhancing tax revenues. That is a core tenet of the Kelo decision. This resolution also raises the bar on creating future em eminent domain authority so that Texas does not grow careless in granting this incredibly important power. It also keeps the government from pursuing property owners whose neighbors neglect their own property, make a neighborhood subject to condemnation and taking. So in short, this bill represents good forward motion on the issue of eminent domain. It's the latest in an ongoing process that I believe will ultimately result in genuine Texas-style protections for private property rights. And I want to take a moment and thank Representative Court and Senator Duncan for sponsoring this bill. Normally at this time I would introduce Frank Court, but um, he is half a world away in Okinawa serving his country as a colonel in the United States Marine Corps. Um, and in his place, I'd like to invite his beautiful wife, Valerie, to join me up here as we listen to a recorded message from her husband. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Governor Perry for the opportunity to address you today. I wish I was here to celebrate with you in the passing of HJR 14. However, many of you may know that I serve our country uh, as a colonel in the Marine Corps Reserve, and I, I'll be doing a short stint of active duty in Okinawa, Japan, assigned to Forces Japan. So, uh, therefore, um, I'm not with you today, but I'm, I'm here with you in spirit and in mind and 
of constitutional amendment to, to protect private property owners in the state of Texas has been my highest uh, legislative priority since 2005, when the Supreme Court delivered the Kelo ruling, holding that eminent domain for private development is consistent with the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. Finally, after two regular and one special session of the legislature, uh, we have a measure to put before the Texas voters. H.A.R. 14 requires the government taking damage and or destruction of pro property must be necessary for the ownership, use, and enjoyment of the property by the state or a political subdivision of the state. Entities already granted the power of eminent domain by law retain that power, but any future granting of the power of eminent domain will require two thirds vote of both chambers of the legislature. Eminent domain is not really a complicated issue. It is the power of the state to take property for public necessity and use. The power is used on a regular basis without public outcry because the necessity of the power is recognized by the public. When the power is misused, the public is clearly outraged because they recognize government and sanction theft. H.J.R. 14 will finally give the citizens of Texas the opportunity to express their support for protecting private property acts at the ballot box. Again, I'm very thankful for the governor and his support of this measure. Uh, I'm looking forward uh, to uh, its passage. I'm very thankful also to Senator Robert Duncan, who has been very instrumental uh, in shaping this, uh, this this good piece of legislation. And I'm, I'm just glad to be uh, part of uh, the team to uh, bring it to Texas voters. Again, thank you very much, and, and uh, I, I look forward to seeing you guys again. Thank you very much. Valerie, please uh, relate our great appreciation to uh, Frank, not only for his work in the legislature, but for his continued service to, uh, to America and in the great state of Texas. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce the uh, Senate sponsor, an individual who has been a great friend and a person of, uh, of extraordinary talent and, and uh, capability, and that is the Senate sponsor, Senator Robert Duncan, to share his perspective. Well, thank you, Governor. First of all, I want to thank you for your leadership and your vision for the state of Texas in making this constitutional amendment a priority for the legislative session. This would not have happened without your leadership and commitment to the private property owners of the state of Texas. So thank you and you're to be congratulated, Governor. It wouldn't have happened without your support. I also want to thank Frank Court. Since 2005, when the Kelo decision came out, Frank Court was the first person to say we needed a constitutional amendment to let the people of the state of Texas voice their support for prop uh, private property rights in this state. So I want to congratulate Frank Court. Frank, you finally got it done, and it was a pleasure to work with you. So uh, we hope that the people of the state of Texas will turn out strong and support this very strong policy statement uh, to support and protect private property rights in the state of Texas, Governor. Um, thank you. Senator, thank you very much, and, and to uh, all of the, the representatives that are here today and, and uh, those that worked with us and, and particularly to the, uh, the various and sundry groups that are also represented standing behind us here, uh, Texas Wildlife Association, Texas Southwestern Cattle Raisers, Texas Farm Bureau, uh, a number of uh, uh, the, the rural and agricultural uh, groups. Uh, I really appreciate their work and, and uh, the assistance on this. And so, um, Senator, again, thank you for your work and, and uh, for standing up for, for Texans and private property rights. And so if you all would join me around the, uh, the legislation, I will give you a display of my ambidextry.